Hi everyone, I'm real glad to see you at this webinar. Today we are going to talk about legal careers with professionals from Deloitte. Uh, Daniela Ribas dos Santos, Shakira Leher, Naomi Handa, and Kestentin Libak. My name is Mikita Zhukov, co founder of the Canadian Ukrainian Legal Alliance. Our mission is to connect and empower Ukrainian and Canadian legal professionals through collaboration, professional development, and the exchange of knowledge and ideas. In the focus of our webinar are careers in consulting and alternative legal careers. I foresee that this video will be full of many interesting facts and insights, but how could it be otherwise when the guys from Deloitte are among the speakers? Well, let's not torment and go straight to the first question. And the first question, what does a career at Deloitte for someone with a background in law look like? And I can start with that. Uh, thank you so much again for having us and really excited to talk about kind of what careers look like at Deloitte. And as a lawyer by training, um, it wasn't something that I initially had thought of or planned for. Uh, when I was in law school, I had not actually considered consulting firms as part of my career choice, but it was actually at law firms where I was speaking to some of my legal mentors and talking about what really excited me. Some of the proactive areas, for example, in the spaces of privacy, risk management, policy, um, kind of uh, in advance looking at what the future might look like for an organization and preparing for it, um, that they said, well, have you considered consulting? Um, so I actually did move into a consulting space in the area of privacy uh, and regulatory risk. And what that looks like is you're still taking your legal knowledge with you. It actually is such a big asset. Um, but you're also thinking proactively together with clients. You're supporting their chief legal officers, their chief privacy officers to think about not only the current legislation, but future laws, um, where this is going across multiple jurisdictions. So again, I think I, I really enjoyed it because I was able to take my legal knowledge and experience with me, but also think a little bit more proactively together with clients um, as part of projects. Well, I um, also have a, a little bit of a unique perspective. I'm actually a foreign trained um, attorney as well, a lawyer. So I'm originally from South Africa and did my legal training um, within South Africa. And what had happened to me was I had originally had um, a finance background. So I'd, I'd done like a commerce degree and then I went into law and, and became a lawyer. And then I did, went to a law firm, joined, and I absolutely hated it. And I was like, this uh, being in a law firm is not something that I can foresee myself happening and um, sort of stumbled into a career in consulting. And I joined Deloitte shortly after I'd finished my my training um, as an attorney and got admitted and I joined Deloitte South Africa. And um, it was finding that environment where I'd be able to use all of my skills that I, I, I'd done in my formal training. So a bit of my finance background and then a bit of my legal background. And then it's in working in a consulting environment and being exposed to all of the different components that occur with um, in all of the different projects, it was a, a way for me to sort of a catalyst of bringing all of that information together and using it to be able to help companies. And I always laugh though, is that um, in terms of being in, in with privacy with Naomi, it's we've got to a point where you can use attorneys to make sure that a company doesn't need to see an attorney at the end of the road. I'd like to add something. Uh, we all have a unique uh, background and experience. My career was, uh, I didn't have also a linear path to get to consulting. Um, um, I have a hold a bachelor degree in law from Brazil, where it's like we have a civil law country like Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken correctly. So when I came to Canada, my idea was use my knowledge, but I want to, wanted to explore uh, different areas, so I decided to study project management. At the time, uh, there was a demand for legal project management, but more in the U.S., not in Canada. So I took a different route, try a little bit of project management, um, and then ended up in privacy, uh, in a non private organization, and then joining consulting. And I think I really like what Naomi said that for me goes to the second question is like more in terms of the difference between a law firm as a litigation lawyer that I have 
years of experience, we are more reactive, right? Uh, usually, uh, especially in a civil law country where you don't have those mediations in your law firm, you react to a situation or a case and go to judge. Uh, sometimes you would advise your client, but from my experience, it was more uh, reactive. And whereas right now, as in consultant, we were more proactive, which is really rewarding because you prevent the situations. And by seeing like so many cases in the uh, judiciary, like it's good to prevent. So that's a difference, I think, in terms of consulting. And I think for sure, uh, having a legal background is a good asset and you can leverage your experience and go to alternative careers inside a consulting or other organization. Yeah, I would also support here because like the mindset of lawyers is the big benefit for the consultant because the skill set that the lawyers can bring to the consultant is enormous. So firstly, like if you're a lawyer, you think from defense perspective. So once you look in any consulting area, you firstly think about, okay, what are the regulations? What are the guidelines? So you know, like, you know, the foundation uh, about the things. And uh, uh, speaking about my background, I have been like in-house lawyer. And after that, I practice uh, refugee and migration law. It was not like directly something related to business and consulting. I would say like, this is also something new for me. And I would definitely say that my legal background and the set of skills that I had helped me a lot. And I'm sure I'd like <laughs> clients also benefit from it. Uh, as you mentioned uh, before about uh, uh, project management, uh, what is your perspective on alternative legal professions, uh, particularly roles such as legal design specialist, legal engineer, legal prompt engineer, and legal project managers. How do you foresee the demand for such specialists uh, increasing in the future? All of the listed occupations that you have just listed, I wouldn't say they are directly law related. They are more IT related. But if you do the IT project, you need uh, you know a specific set of skills and uh, legal knowledge to implement any kind of project. So I, I wouldn't say that this is to some extent the perfect best way for the lawyers. If you want to practice law and want to use directly your legal skills, this is more if you are an IT savvy, if you like IT technologies, definitely it would be the right best way for you to practice this field. And I would say, yeah, technology, innovation, uh, generative IA, IA, this is a big topics now and it's like the demand will grow for such kind of specialists but if you think about the law career like definitely like you need to practice law yep, yep. you need to, like, to choose first like you need to decide i want to be a lawyer or you want to have something or you know, quasi something related to law so if you want to practice law go and practice law but if you want to try something new like yeah go ahead I think, yeah, for sure, there is a great demand in technology for you as a legal uh, project manager, if you understand about technology, but not only that, as a legal project manager, you can work um, in law firms, for example, helping and supporting them to, because the lawyers lack in terms of budgeting, sometimes they spend a lot of time. So you uh, organize basically their workload and to meet the budget that you have to the client, so then you don't spend a lot of time. Uh, there are professionals doing that right now in law firms or even organizations, private organizations. Um, also, uh, on top of that, you as a legal project manager, you can support organizations in consulting or private organizations to implement a new regulation in their department to uh, create a new structure for the legal department. Um, so revising their system, the way they work or the way they operate it. Uh, for sure, there are other aspects you can use as a legal project manager. Uh, based, of course, in your knowledge, every time that you have a knowledge or have a background, it supports you as a legal project manager. A project manager doesn't require you to have the knowledge of what you're doing. I work as a PM in construction and I have no knowledge about construction. I had to read drawings and everything, but basically was to be on time on budget. But for sure, um, it helps when you have the knowledge. As of, If you work in the IT project management, it helps if you have a knowledge. So as the same area, if you do an implementation for a new regulation and organization or a structured department. 
Which field do you consider to be the most accessible for foreign lawyers, including Ukrainians, to start their legal career in Canada? Both, actually, my husband and I are both um, lawyers by training, um, and we've, we're both taking a little bit of a different path in terms of I chose not to um, have my legal profession recognized within Canada, whereas my husband is taking the approach of going to doing his barrister and solicitor exam, and he just passed those, so he's waiting for his call to the bar. So what I found in terms of both of him specifically looking at careers and that I definitely think in terms of legal advisory roles within organizations, there's a lot of scope in terms of if you don't want to go through that process of um, being called to the bar, but still want to be able to use your legal um, knowledge. So a lot of roles sort of in compliance, risk advisory, specifically where we sit in. Um, and as Daniela had said earlier, legal management, I've seen a lot of roles in terms of um, also for a lot of um, legal firms are partnering with your technology companies in developing legal technical solutions or, or legal IT solutions, and they'd need an advisor in terms of that. And it's not something that you might not necessarily need to be um, a registered attorney within uh, within um, one of the provinces. Um, so definitely something along those lines, aligning with technology and, and sort of the changes within the legal environment as well in terms of innovation and, and AI. Um, and then obviously Deloitte uh, is, is, has been a perfect opportunity and a really great place where you didn't need to be um, admitted or, or, or having a call to a bar, but be able to really heavily use the knowledge that you have. I would add here is it depends on your practice, uh, where you're a specialist in. So definitely if you're a lawyer, previously have practiced any kind of law, it can be corporate law, tax law, migration, refugee law, any kind. So if you are a specialist and you have been a specialist like in this precise law in your own country, so when you come to Canada, you can still continue doing this because you bring your expertise and you bring a different perspective. So if you want, uh, like I would say that there is no like um, precise question to your question. It depends on the practice. If you think you're a specialist in this field and you like find a passion and passion will drive you, go and practice this field. So where I wouldn't say like that you need sometimes follow the market and do somebody that, you know, that markers tells you, okay, you need to do this. If you're passionate about it, I'm sure you will be quite competitive on the market. However, if you want to try any different field or something like law related, it can be AML, KYC related, it can be something in a fraud or it can be anything because like legal skills gives you a big advantage. And I would say like, um, in this way, there is no precise question. It depends what you want to practice. If you want to practice law, go uh, comply with the lawyers, pass the bar exam, practice law. If you want to try something new, yeah, go ahead. But firstly, find the fields you want to practice and find the skills you want to sell, sell on the market, because this is important. If you will go a bit vague on the market and say, okay, I can do everything, However, you are not a specialist in any of the field. Unfortunately, um, the employer might be a bit you know, skeptical about you and about your abilities. So firstly, I would say also try to think about um, what skills you can bring to the market and go to the employer with those skills. So I think uh, uh, I think Katya said something very important to have to be passionate about it. But take that as a great opportunity sometimes to redirect your professional life. There's no right or wrong if you want to become a lawyer here again. There is a path to do that. If you want to explore something else, I think that's a really great time because there was a time that lawyers just did law as a lawyer in a law firm. But right now you have more opportunities to explore. Check what you like it, but also be open to discuss and contact people and to understand what you're doing on a daily basis. That's how I ended up in privacy. At the beginning, as I said, I want to be a legal project manager, but ended up talking to somebody from IT who told me about privacy. And I decided to explore, to read, get more information. So I started attending network. And so then just explore because there are things out there. It is a great time for you to explore something else. Maybe you like more technology. Maybe you were a different path. You like the type, the type of agreements, conversation with people who can be a mediator. 
So there are things there. You just sometimes have to discuss with people, open your mind when you talk to them, and just read about it. Then explore and see what you like it. Uh, so then there are new fields right now, like legal engineering, legal project manager, uh, legal design, then you explore new processes, processes, procedures. There are different areas. So I just be open-minded to understand exactly what is required to do. And if you're interested in doing that, I think that's the most important. If you're interested, then you start looking after for certifications, courses, and whatever is required for you to operate or to get your first or initial opportunity here in Canada. Absolutely. And what was great hearing kind of the different experiences is showing that multiple backgrounds and different experiences and, and specializations are all very helpful for careers in consulting, um, including at Deloitte. Uh, one of the things that we've seen an absolute increase in is uh, the pace of change at organizations as it relates to not only the technology, but the organizational change and the legal drivers and complexity around that. So we do see an increase in the need for these types of roles in consulting, primarily because the organizations we're working with and the nature of our organization has that need. Um, so absolutely. And I'll give, you know, maybe a couple of examples as well. Um, we talked a bit about the space of privacy, and that's the space that, that I and, and some of the team members here work in. Um, in the space of privacy, we may be looking at how an organization is governing data, what's the accountability, the legal requirements, um, the current and upcoming regulations, and also how they're going to manage that going forward. And But we'd also be looking at how are they going to scale that using technology? And that's where we th see a background from an engineering perspective, from a technical perspective becoming really, really important and being able to see basically the extent of the connectivity across all of those and those dependencies. Um, another example might be working with an organization to assess where they are from a maturity perspective. Um, how deep do they understand their requirements and implementing it? And again, someone with a legal background who also understands, for example, project management, governance, uh, technology, that can lend another level of depth to that type of assessment can be very, very valuable. And we work across the entire firm in different industry specializations, technology specializations in order to deliver that. So we have found that these roles um, are becoming increasingly important. I'd like to talk about uh, building successful networking in Canada. What factors should foreign lawyers take into account and which tools could be the most effective? I can add to that. Um, so I, I think Daniela had touched on it in, in her previous um, uh, quick answer is definitely make use of um, certifications, networking events, um, and, and try to upskill yourself to, to, to the best of your ability. There's a number of free resources available um, in terms, you can LinkedIn has a lot of education training courses. Harvard also has a few training courses and you can find the ones that are free. There is a lot of resources around that. They are obviously also the ones that you pay for. Um, specifically, I, I think it's always good to look at when you are um, deciding which courses to take, look at the possible positions that you might want to um, apply for and look at what requirements and certifications they 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 want you to have. Um, and then maybe base your your um, your choices in, in your upskilling in that. Um, in terms of the process around um, if you do want to get um, have a call to the bar, um, I, I'm not too sure in terms of how the recognition of U um, Ukrainian attorneys or lawyers are within Canada. Um, I know from a South African perspective, there was a few um, conversion exams that had to be done. And after that, um, you then would have to go on the process of having your call to the bar. Um, in terms of that process, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, there's study groups, there's um, quite a few foreign networking law um, associations where you can actually reach out to these organizations. They'll help you and they'll guide you in terms of which um, uh, textbooks to look at, what information to look at. Um, and, and there's a lot of, there's just, there is a lot of information um, out there and there's a lot of people that are actually willing to help you. Um, I do definitely know, also just from a pure legal perspective, um, there are a lot of rules 
um, and there's a lot of rigidity also still in this in the system. So as you're educating yourself, make sure that you stay completely aware of the rules and the guidelines, especially with whichever um, law society and province you want to, you want to be practicing. Make sure you're fully aware of that. Um, but definitely try and upskill yourself. And if um, obviously if you coming from um, a situation with, with within Ukraine and, and you might be in a transition where uh, you may be in another country before you come into Canada as a refugee, if that is your situation, and use that time in your transition to be able to upskill yourself. Um, and a lot of people have found that by the time you come to Canada, if you have at least have um, sort of developed a bit of a background, it does help in terms of having to progress quicker. Um, but like in terms of the experience that we've had so far, we've been here for about eight months, uh, my family and I, and um, there's a lot there that, out there that can help you. And, and obviously aligning yourself with, with companies and organizations that, that are willing to upscale you is, is always a benefit. Networking is very important in Canada because without networking, it would be very hard for the lawyer um, on the grassroots when you want to start your career in Canada, it would be very hard. So yeah, this is a very important topic. But here, like how to network correctly, I would say like in Canada, people are open-minded. So we can approach person directly and they usually, they will reply you back. Like in my case, the most efficient uh, platform was LinkedIn. So uh, you can directly tap text to the HRs of any of the company you have an interest in and the HR will reply you back. Also another, tool might be like there are a lot of um, associations etc so try to go to the networking event of those associations and try to talk to, to as much people as you can because you never know you never know how the opportunity can pop up for you and you never know who will meet during those, those events so be open-minded and i'm sure you will find the right people who will be open that you know the door of opportunity for you in canada so we're uh, yeah, so the first thing, like LinkedIn, try to text people directly. You can even text to the partners, uh, to lawyers, and they'll reply you back. Go to as many events as you can and go to this special event like of your interest. So, for example, if you're interested in AML, there is like AKMs associations. So you can be become a member of those associations and go and go for any network networking event and you can direct, directly talk to the directors to the partners to the people who actually hire and yeah i would say like this is the most effective way in canada just talk directly to, to people yeah I, I would echo those comments as well uh definitely a big emphasis on certification i think increasingly over the last few years i know once i'd gone through my my legal education i thought maybe i'd never need to take another exam again but absolutely what we've seen is that clients um, those who are networking with are looking for some sort of marker of what are you passionate about and committed to and that's where the certifications even if you've already worked in that space can be a really good marker for your commitment but as well as mentioned it allows you to also network with those associations who are advancing some of the education and the certifications as well. So joining those professional dialogues, um, being part of even some of the writing or point of view development with some of those thought leaders, that can be really helpful to engaging in that next level of conversation with those that you'd like to network with and start to identify some of those opportunities that may not be readily available um, through some of the existing platforms. Some of the ones that we've been connected with, for example, are like the Ontario Bar Association or Canadian Bar Association, um, groups of professionals around in the space of privacy, um, the International Association of Privacy Professionals. And, and just as was mentioned, really looking at a smaller group that's tied to some of the uh, passions and objectives and career interests that you may have, um, who can really uh, have a different type of dialogue in terms of advancing some of those discussions. As part of like um, our journey here, we made use of a lot of forums within Facebook and Reddit. Um, you'd obviously find there's certain questions that somebody has that you have that somebody has had and a hundred people have answered that question. Um, so on Facebook, you will find a lot of um, forums for specifically um, 
foreign trained attorneys or somebody going through the process of coming to Canada and they are closed groups so there is like sort of a barrier in terms of making sure that you you're not either trolled or, or, or uh, you know you're vi victim to any sort of um, nefarious or incorrect information and they are it is a way of allowing you to connect with individuals that are going through the same process that you're going through and have like the same silly question. Um, so, I mean, like when my husband was writing um, his, his, his solicitor and barrister exams, um, there's a very strict requirement around how your files have to be presented and the information that you have to leave after you write the exam. And he couldn't get it, an understanding of like, what exactly is the rules? And having these forums and, and these informal um, sort of advisory um, networks did help him understand the process. So when he got to the exam, he knew, okay, he needed to have a water bottle that had no label on it. He needed to, he knew that they were gonna take his study materials after he wrote. So it wasn't something that came as, as a surprise because he'd gone through and read all these forums um so that's that definitely does help and um it is also an opportunity to network because a lot of these um these informal groups do have like say we they'll have meetups or um amongst um say amongst the south africans there is a professional network where we also can meet up and meet other fellow south africans and i'm sure um in terms of like with the ukrainian act similar to this there would be facebook forums and and within like say whichever area you end up, you could may have a meetup once a year, twice a year, and you'd meet some of the people who've gone through your same journey that, that allow you to relate. And I, and I found like the Facebook and uh, groups and that was specifically helpful in that way. Yeah, no, I think that's that's such a great point. And, um, and, and also had me thinking about, you're right, some of those um, broader forums where you can learn about some of the processes that others are going through that are similar. Um, so that's so important. Uh, the other thing I had thought about was even looking at um, broader kind of technology groups. So when we're thinking about some of the thought leaders in this space, um, it also is really helpful to look a little bit more broadly. So even looking at certain kind of magazines or websites, um, you know, Wired, the MIT Tech Review, the um, Harvard Business Review, and you'll actually start to see some of those leaders who may be in some of these other forums, but actually speaking a little bit differently to business problems or technology problems, or you might get an idea of, I'm really passionate in this one space, how can I bring my legal experience to that area? Because we don't see many people talking about it. And so I think we mentioned having those conversations and reaching out directly. If you do see someone who's written an article um, and it sounds interesting, and exciting. Uh, finding a way to reach out to them or some of the community groups they may be involved in um, can also be another important step as well. I'd like to add one more. So I've been through the same process you're, you're right now. So uh, LinkedIn for sure, I, I reach out to a lot of people, but I also did what uh, Naomi just said. I started attending some events for technology. Task is one of them. Is free, so you can go there. They will speak about some technologies. I didn't understand much. It was very complex, but I met a lot of people. There's also some associations. There is a Latin technology group. I forgot the name, but if you find on LinkedIn, I attend some network um, and met people. It's where I met the person that told me about privacy. So for sure, going that PMP also has some events. You can go there. There's some interesting workshops. You can search the ones that are for free, or if you're willing to pay, you can pay a little bit to attend some events. Uh, Toastmaster is also something great. You go there to learn, to speak, but also you meet people from with different backgrounds and just ask them, can you give me 10 minutes to share your experience? And you schedule um, video calls with them, or if they're, they're available, you can have a coffee with them. Just to understand that path here, or their career, what, what they're doing, and then get some feedback. What can I do to, to get to this profession? Just talking to people, and but all of them are available for you there. If you search, you can find LinkedIn has a lot of groups. Also, you can reach out all the groups and attend. They also have mentorships programs in those uh, um, platforms or those groups in, on LinkedIn. So I've attended some of them. So it's a great way also to have somebody to mentor you, to guide you. What can you navigate or what can you do with your background and your skills? <clears throat> what skills and qualities should a person possess to secure a position at Deloitte? 
I can start and it'd be great for, for others to jump in because I do think this is something that uh, is varied. And what's great about Deloitte is the ability to come with different skills or backgrounds to those on your team and add that that new element to it. Um, I'll, I'll give some examples of some of the skills and qualities um, that are beneficial uh, to working at Deloitte. One would be being able to work in a team uh, I did find when I moved from a law firm to consulting firm, immediately those who I worked with day to day grew. The number of people on my teams grew. Uh, and that's very much the nature of how we work uh, on projects that may be very complex, have multiple components to them, multiple work streams. Um, and so being able to work collaboratively, but also kind of meet some of those expectations and ask the right questions of clients in your team to get to those solutions to complex problems is really, really important. So that collaborative work, that problem solving, I would say is one of the key components to being able to, um, to work effectively at Deloitte. Um, and I'll pass it to some of my team members also to speak about some of the other qualities that we see as important. I think I'll, I was actually just what came immediately to mind and, and Naomi had already mentioned it is problem solving. Um, I think what's important to note is that when you interview at Deloitte or when they look at you, they're not expecting you to have all the answers already, but it's that ability to be able to find the answer is what's the key skill. Um, so if you have that, that ability to put information together, to digest and process information and be able to get to the solution that best works for your um, client or for, for, for whichever project that you're working on is always um, so really, really, really valuable. And I think, um, is super is to just have that like openness um and it's a, as a lawyer that's probably the most difficult thing that um you'd have to come to terms with when you come into a consulting environment because you come from such rigidity but when you are in a consulting environment you have to have that openness and have to understand that you know the letter of the law is not necessarily what an organization might be looking for from you but being open to exploring all of the different solutions and finding a an answer to the problem that actually works for your client to work for your for your specific circumstance. I would, I would add here as well, like communication skills in the combination with the soft skills are very important because the way you speak and the way you treat people, like yeah, people you know can feel it. And um, this is like communication, the way you communicate. If you're able to you know to deliver a public speech or the way you present the information, this is also very important. And another one, it will be, I would say, like data analysis and information analysis and the ability to vi visualize those data into the deck. To be, this is more practical, but this also resonates with the communication. So the way you communicate and the way you deliver the information, this is very important. I'll just uh, give something extra that is not related just to Deloitte, but any other company determination. You have to really uh, be determined what you want and don't be afraid to get a no. <laughs> you might get some no's along the way, but just don't give up. Um, believe that you're capable and what you want, and then you can work on those other skills. If you have a determination, you can work on that. Yeah, I would quickly add here the difference between European market, like for example, Canadian market, because in Canada, you need to apply to as many positions as you can. And this is still normal in Canada if for uh, the position where you apply, they do not reply you back or they can reply you back after two months. It's not like the way like I experienced in Europe or in, in Ukraine, because once you apply, usually you receive the feedback immediately or maybe in one week, or at least you will get the rejection letter. Here in Canada, like it's uh, you need to apply as to as many positions as you can, and still like you might they might contact you back maybe after two months or three months. Maybe they will find you back in the database, and this is fine. It doesn't mean like also what all what you need to know. Like it doesn't mean that you are bad or you have or no sufficient skills. This is the way like how the market work. Because usually they maybe look for the precise skills that skill that you don't have, but after that they can return back to you. So where uh, I would also advise here, like to apply to as many positions as you can, uh, in line with your interest, and tailor your CV and tailor your motivation letter to the position you apply to be more specific. And this comes with the determination. <laughs> I would say like it it shows you you know over uh, cover. Uh, how you're able, you know, um, 
to sell yourself uh, as well on the market? Uh, what consulting advisory fields are currently growing and in which of these is a legal background helpful? The, the roles that are growing the quickest tend to be related to either something that's changed by technology or might be able to use technology. Um, and what I mean by that is in some cases, the role may be still related to a legal understanding or how um, a, a team or governance or operating model might be set up. Um, but the reason it's growing is because of some sort of impact of change in technology. Um, and the other piece would really be even implementing the technology. So designing a solution that may, may be able to support an organization in managing their legal or in, in the case of some of the work we do, their privacy and regulatory risks. Um, so those are the areas that we see a lot of growth around. Uh, and I think every organization we've worked with who really is thinking about how they're using data, and that's many organizations now, um, really are seeing this type of need and demand and are looking for organizations that have the experience but are also are well connected globally to bring some of the lessons learned from other similar organizations or other jurisdictions as well. My perception is it will be like cybersecurity, including privacy and data. It will be fraud and it will be ESG. Well, in Canada, I was like, like ESG, like it composes three components, but the input here is more on env environmental. What trends do you foresee in the development of the legal market in this regard? I can speak to some of the things that we're seeing from um, privacy regulatory perspective, as, as well as artificial intelligence and the impact it's having. And then, and I would agree, really say that that's been a big driver for increasing the rate of change that we're seeing from other broader technical changes as well. Um, so I do think that's something that is transforming the legal profession and the way that we operate. We talked a bit about um, the proactivity that we can have as part of a, a consulting team that has a legal knowledge. So it's changing the way that um, lawyers are, are really being used as um, you know, thought leaders in this space and advisors, strategic advisors for clients. So I do think while we're seeing that as part of the work we're doing, it also has an impact on the profession. And it has an impact on the discussions that we're having around not only training and those who are going through their, their legal um, education, but also retraining and focusing on particular areas as well. Um, so in Canada, we do have some changes to some provincial legislation, to um, some proposed changes nationally around our private sector privacy legislation and also conversations around the component that relates to assessing and managing AI risk. What is that going to look like um, for organizations in Canada and globally? So that really means bringing a broader skill set uh, along with the legal education and legal career, but it also means a number of new opportunities that organizations are now specifically looking for as part of the work they're doing. Um, you've heard of the notions of you know, privacy by design, security by design, um, but they're really broadening that to kind of risk um, and regulatory understanding, embedding that very early in the kind of business technology design process and having someone who can understand what are the impacts of that? How do we manage and assess and monitor this over time? And how do we design something that, that makes sense for our organization? So I think to the question around uh, impacting the legal career, I think it's, it's impacting uh, in the entire profession uh, in a way that's broadening the types of opportunities um, and type of role that we have with organizations.